What's going on guys, Brad here. In this video, I wanna try and clear up some things that I either glossed over or didn't really mention in my REW level matching video. So in that REW level matching video, there were some things I should have talked about and didn't. And can you tell I didn't write a script for that one? But anyway, I got some questions in the comments from a few people asking stuff like, should I turn off Odyssey first before doing this? And why don't you just use the internal test tones in the receiver? Well, I'll attempt to answer those questions and clear up any confusion. So hopefully by the end of this video, things will be a bit more clear and make more sense. And just an FYI, this will be more or less a talking head video. So feel free to go ahead and minimize this and listen to it in the background if you want to. And before we get started, if you're new to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell icon so you never miss out when I upload a new video. Also, be sure to check out the description for links to stuff like calibration tools I'd recommend, and also a full list of my complete home theater setup. So one of the things I didn't mention in that video before was if you're using any type of room correction or EQ, be it Odyssey, Dirac, YPAO, etc., you want those things active while you're going through the process of level matching your speakers. Now, I know that in a lot of my tutorials I've previously done, I told you to turn that off, so I get how it can be confusing, especially because I didn't mention it in that video. But here, we want to level match the speaker with room correction and EQ applied because we need to take into account how that room correction and EQ are affecting the speaker's frequency response. Now that leads me onto the topic of why I used REW and its tone generator to level match the speakers instead of the receiver's internal test tones. Now I briefly mentioned in the other video, it's because typically any type of room correction or EQ is completely disabled or turned off when using the receiver's internal test tones. Now, like I said a second ago, we need to take into account what EQ and room correction are doing to the speaker's frequency response so we can set that level accurately using REW's SPL meter. Now, using an external source such as REW through your computer or a setup disc like Avia or Digital Video Essentials play through your Blu-ray player is one of the easiest ways to do that. Otherwise, there's a chance you'll end up setting that level too high or too low depending on your EQ and room correction if you use the internal test tones and that could lead to certain channels in your system being louder than others. Now, if you've used Odyssey or some other room correction before, then you know that it also sets the levels of each individual channel for you. So why would you wanna change it? Well, it's been my experience that while most room correction software does a pretty decent job of getting the levels right, sometimes it can be hit or miss. For instance, something that I've noticed happens nearly every single time I run Odyssey and go to confirm the levels with the SPL meter afterwards, Odyssey has set the level for my center channel a couple decibels too low, while also adding a decibel or two to the surround channels. Now again, this is based on my personal experience using different versions of Odyssey over the years, so it's just something I've kind of adopted in my calibration process as a means to verify that I'm getting 75 dB on all my speakers when my receiver is set to zero dB. Now, one of the other questions related to Odyssey that came up was why is there sometimes a significant difference between the levels that Odyssey sets versus the levels that you set manually using REW or a test disc? Well, honestly, I wish I could give you a straight answer, but the fact of the matter is I'm not entirely sure. Now, what I can say is that level matching my speakers using REW gets me the same results as level matching my speakers using two different setup discs, Avia and Digital Video Essentials. Now, I always end up with the same channel levels regardless if I use REW either of those discs. I just always use REW because I find it easier and just quicker to use. Now, I have read before that Odyssey may use the first position it measures, which is where you sit when you watch movies and stuff, to determine the speaker levels and distances and only uses those additional measurements at other positions for EQ. So essentially it will take all the measurements from say the left speaker, determine an average frequency response from all of them combined, and then attempt to fix any peaks and valleys in the response with EQ. Now it's worth mentioning here that I did not read that from Odyssey and that's not an official statement or anything. This was posted on a home theater forum which I honestly cannot remember the name of right now. However, I do have a contact at Odyssey that I will hopefully get the chance to talk to soon. And this is definitely a question I wanna ask him so we can get the full picture and kind of understand what Odyssey is doing behind the scenes. 
So hopefully this video cleared some things up that I forgot to add in that last video. Sorry if I didn't answer all your questions here, but you know how it goes. But if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful anyway, feel free to give it a like as it does help this video reach more people. Also, if you have any questions about what I talked about in this video, or if you have some insight into how Odyssey does its thing, then leave a comment down below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.